Our brothers breaking up the bones, the Jews are breaking up their bones in, in Palestine. You just sit like this, like a jellyfish. No. The reason is you don't really believe. If you really believe, you'll move in that direction. So the thing is, my dear brother, my son, go to the Quran. Allow Allah to talk to you and to me and to every passerby in the street. Because Allah is speaking to you, to me, and to every passerby in the street. And we have the advantage that our Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he needed Akhi Jibreel to bring him messages. Without Jibreel, you have the message now. Direct contact with Allah's Kalam. Listen to him and go and implement it. And inshallah, G7 or G14, we will be able to do the job. It's left to you. The onus is on you and me and every one of us. Yes, Paisa. As the subject is on miracles, from previous lectures, I've, meant to, I've understood that the Christians, fundamental, one of the most fundamental issues in believing that Jesus was God, is because of the miracles he was creating. One of the greatest miracles was bringing the dead back to life. We are made to believe that, and we are made to believe the Old Testament also. In that case, what about when Moses threw his staff and he turned into a serpent? Is that a great miracle, or is bringing a, a dead man back to life a great miracle? Yes, the logic is very good, beautiful. You see, Jesus gave life to the dead. The Quran says, Biznillah, by Allah's help. The Bible says the very same thing, that he didn't give life to the dead. If we read the verses, you see, we can go into the details and analyze the miracles, but in the Bible also, Jesus doesn't say he does the works. He said, I, by the finger of God, cast out devils. I, by the Spirit of God, do these things. So I, of my own self, can do nothing. Who does it? It is you who does the work. Allah is doing, working through him. So he disowns giving life to the dead. Or oh, any miracle. Everything says, Allah, you are doing it. You are doing it. It's not me. But the Christians say, he gave life to the dead. They say, all right, for a moment again. We agree with him. So in that case, we say it's a great miracle. Lazarus, they say, after three days he was revived from the dead. Fantastic. But as is now, as you mentioned, you reminded me that Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, the miracle Allah gave him, through him, was that he was told that the Asad, the rod, go before Pharaoh and you go and throw it and it will become a serpent, a snake. And this serpent that Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, the rod, became a serpent and it swallowed up all the little snakes of the Egyptians which were the little magic wands. And when it was swallowed up and Musa alayhi salam picked up the rod, all those little rods or snakes had vanished. And the Egyptian magicians realized that this is not magic. Magic is a type of illusion you create. People think you did this and you did that, maybe a sleight of hand, quickness of hand, deceives the eye. All these things can happen. We don't know what, what the guy does. But we are marveling because we couldn't account for what, what he did. But the Egyptian magician, when we read the Quran, they confessed that this is not magic. Because magic would be, you are mesmerized, somebody demesmerizes you. Back again to normal, the sticks become sticks, no more snakes, and the rod becomes rod. But no, all the little sticks had vanished. Where did they go? And the rod is still the same. So giving life to the rod, which is an inanimate thing, a dead wood, it's a greater miracle, a dead piece of wood bringing, I said, a man dies, certified dead, to bring him back to life is a miracle. But it's not as astonishing as you take a piece, this pen here, my pen. If I can make this into a little snake, that will be greater if genuinely, if I can make this into a snake, and you feel it, and you can feel that man, this is, you let it go, and somebody else picks it up and he lets it go, he says, no, this is genuine. This is a little, tiny serpent. This will be greater than giving life to the dead because this is dead, dead, dead. The rod is dead, dead, dead. And you make it animate? Then Jesus, if you analyze and weigh the miracles. Thank you for your question. And in order to understand the meaning of Quran, is it necessary to learn Arabic language? 
There is nothing better than to understand the Quran in the language in which Allah had revealed. Translation is a translation. It can never be equal to the Arabic Quran because this is Allah's kalam, His words. And they have meaning and a feeling which you can't produce in a translation. But we are hungry people. You are hungry, you want biryani, biryani. If you can't get biryani, what do you do? It's a doll and rice will do. You know, simple doll, rice, it's a, a crumb of bread and some doll will do to assuage your hunger. Same. The translation is just that. But in the meantime, if you strict yourself, no, you must learn the Arabic language before you approach the Quran, you might never come to that. Therefore, the second best is a translation. And if you understand Urdu better than any other language, you get an Urdu translation. If you understand Bengali better than any other language, get a Bengali translation. If you understand Gujarati better than any other language, get a Gujarati translation. They are all available. But in this environment, I said an English translation is imperative. And the cheapest and the best and the most organized is this one I'm showing you. This one here. By Abdullah Yusuf Ali. They are available outside. As well as all my little booklets that I have written. Christ in Islam. This is the Bible God's word and all that. There are any two for a pound. Any two for a pound. Or 50 pence each. And again, I assure you, no commission for me. Except with Allah. Thank you. I want to thank God for a person like uh, Sheikh Didar among us. And on that basis also I know that Sheikh Didar does not need much for questions. He is always explaining very well. I have seen his uh, tapes and I have seen read his booklets. Only thing what I have found uh, one little thing which I want is rather a suggestion that he has never touched upon the fact that this is a book which is learned by heart by more people than ever in the world and it is really a miracle to me and would you like to say something about that that was a statement but we'll allow it yes my dear brothers you see look as i said there are so many things i can keep you here till midnight just on the subject of al-quran the miracle of miracles but everything even good things there is an end to that this uh, this idea or this fact that we have so many hufas. At the moment, there are four million Hafiz al-Qurans in the world. Somebody estimated four million. People who know the whole Quran by heart. From one end to the other, they can read it off. And the greater miracle of that is that bulk of the people who know the Quran by heart, they don't understand one word. There's no other language on earth that you can rattle off a language without understanding what you're saying. And they say it beautifully, perfectly. So this is still a greater miracle, but I'm not very proud of it. Of that miracle, I'm not very proud. I says, brothers and sisters, you ought to know what you are reading. Make an effort. You read it in Arabic, get a translation, and try and correlate, correlate. And over a period, passively, you learn the language. Or at least the Quranic words. That whenever you hear, Ya Yuhallazina Amanu, you keep on, Ya Yuhall, O you who believe, Ya Yuhallazina Amanu, O you who believe. Over a period when the Imam is dealing a khutbah, Ya Yuhallazina Amanu, Taqullah Haqqa Tuqatihi, Wala Tamutun Nail. You will be able to catch at least here, there, there. And it will be more lively and more spiritually enlightening, elevating than just listening to the sound of the Quran. Yes, My question is, what are some of the signs in the Quran? How does that compare with some of the biblical signs which says one of the final ones is that the Jews will build their original temple at, in the exact location of the, Roma, the Dome of the Rock? My dear brothers and sisters, in this Quran, I take it you have a translation, Yusuf Ali's, you have, mashallah. You open up, you open up the index, go to the index, and you find there hereafter. You find there the day of judgment. There are more than 100 references about the day of judgment and about the life hereafter. Now, you do a little bit of homework, go through those, and inshallah you may be able to come along and inform us. In other words, now I, have to, I haven't done a study of that. I must confess.